I have a question. Like, how do we get to that zero fight relationship? I, I, I can't say it. I deal. When, like, for example, my wife, like, I don't know. I don't want to include all women because I just have that experience with, with this woman. But I feel like oftentimes it's not like they're saying they're being vocal, but it's like it's it's more it seems like it's pushed on to us to like when we're saying how we feel it's not i guess perceived the right way can you give me an example of something that would be a fight oh like okay for example for my birthday i went out with some of my friends but i had spent the whole day with her but she was upset but then she went out but she said it was a different story that she want because she wanted me to go out with her friends and i said well i spent the whole day with you and so now i want to go with my friends so that was an argument so it sounds like there's two two parts of this problem one is a lack of communication and the other is ego would you agree with that i would agree yeah Okay. So an expectation is a story we created inside our head that disappoints us when it doesn't come true. And it sounds like both of you or at least one of you created a story and then didn't communicate the story in their head. And then when the story didn't play out the way they imagined it should play out on this particular day, that created a sense of disappointment. That disappointment was then vomited onto the other partner instead of the person who created the story saying, oh, wait a second, I'm having emotions. Did I make up a story? Yes, I did. Let me address my imagination instead of turning my imagination into an emotion that I then vomit onto my partner and make them responsible for the story I created. That makes sense. I didn't think about it that way. Would you consider your wife otherwise to be a generous long-term thinker? I, I would. I, I would say that she's generous to other people. Okay. I wonder if these would help. I wonder if the tips in here would help create better communication, which would then create more closeness because what happened in the situation is because the communication was off, the connection of love and happiness was disconnected. So when you don't disconnect love and happiness, I want you to think about a gopher coming out of a hole, right? Safety, emotional safety is the gopher coming out of the hole. So let's say you guys read these books and you enhance your communication. And so you're not getting into fights or arguments or you're actually communicating instead and you're not disconnecting love and happiness now since you're not disconnecting you're starting to feel more safe because what happens when you feel safe the gopher comes out of the hole and looks around if there isn't a fight then the gopher comes out of the hole but stays close to the hole if there isn't a fight the gopher goes further away from the hole so the fight is the predator for the gopher. The fight scares you. you, you retract your good emotions, you pull back in, you go into your hole. So when there's no more fights or arguments, or when there's no more disconnect of love and, and happiness, it grows like the gopher coming out of the hole going further and further and further because it feels safer and safer and safer. And so now you start getting an abundance of generosity. Now you start getting an abundance of service to each other, of goodness to each other, of love and affection to each other, uninterrupted, so it continues to grow, grow, grow. I haven't had a fight with my husband in eight years. Our love continues to grow even eight years down the road. It still gets bigger. I can feel those moments where it takes the next step into even bigger still. What do you think about that? It's resonating. I think that that makes sense. I do sometimes often think though, like, is it in doing all of that, do you think that there are certain individuals that believe that, well, that fight is a way that my spouse is showing me that they are still interested, that they still care? Because that's, for me, in my personal situation, that's how I feel sometimes while they're going on because they're about stuff that, well, I'm not going to say they don't matter. I guess they matter to her. But it could be very little, like a new situation that is blown out of proportion because I'm not giving it the same like passion, I guess. 
that I feel like it's like shouldn't be an argument. And to me, in my mind, I feel like it's like for her, it's like, oh, well, if he's if he's arguing back or he's fighting back, then that means he cares about me. And that's that's how I feel. And that is dysfunctional because you are equating chaos to connection instead of communication to connection, instead of love to connection, instead of peace to connection. So I have two recommendations for you. One, start introducing minimum two kisses a day, minimum five seconds each. Are you guys doing this yet at this point? Are you are you at this time in your relationship having minimum two kisses a day, minimum five seconds each? Well, I would say minimum, yeah. When she's going out for work or I'm going or passing because I work nights and she works days. So well, like when we're passing by, we'll, and it's not five seconds, it's like a peck and then we're gone. Like, oh, you know? see, no, 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 this is important. So the reason why I say no kissing for three months is because those kisses create chemicals that are amphetamines, aphrodisiacs, and antidepressants. They make us feel too good about somebody that we don't yet know deserves those feelings. But when you have selected your long-term partner, you want to make sure you never become roommates because that can happen. You work days, you work nights, sometimes hormones, sometimes babies, sometimes aging bodies, sometimes stress sometimes fatigue, all of these things can make the bedroom few and far between. And we need to have a feeling of intimacy in our relationship. And if we don't create and maintain that feeling of intimacy, then we start to feel like we're roommates. And when we only call the bedroom intimacy and it's been a while, we start saying there's a lack of intimacy. Now you're putting yourself in a downward spiral of thinking your relationship is failing. So when you have daily intimacy, in those minimum two kisses a day, so hello and goodbye is a good time, minimum two kisses a day, minimum five seconds, you create a lingering closeness that will stay with you when you leave, right? I made out with my husband this morning. I'm still feeling loving and affectionate towards him now. So that's that's the that's one of the two tips. The other is to get both of these books you're going to show her yours. You're going to, you're going to say, Hey baby, you know what? I was talking to this dating coach on TikTok, and she gives really great advice and she's been in a relationship for 17 years and they're so happy. And I was like, damn, what's your secret girl? And she said, I wrote books and I got this because I really want to learn how to be a better partner for you. And I got this one too, in case you wanted to read her journey, her journey on that. So, so, Phrase it that way so that you're not making her feel like she's a sacrificial lamb that you're saying, it's all you and you got to fix your shit, right? Don't make her defensive right. about it because defensive people don't listen to what you say. So make it about your desire and then offer up if she wants. And you know how people are. If I tell you what to do, you're going to shut down, right? So if right. you want. I'm doing this because I want you so much, baby. I love you. And if you want, I got this one for you too. I'm just going to leave it right there. Okay. That, that's good advice because, you, you know, what you said about like defensive people, you have to change the way you are saying it. Like, is that what you're, is, am I understanding that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time and for letting me up. Anytime, my friend. Keep us posted, okay? I will. And I'm. Uh, where can I get your books from, though? It sounds like you're in the U.S. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's so cute when you guys see them. So if you click on my picture, it's going to take you to my TikTok profile. And at the top is a link tree. Click on that. Scroll down a little bit. You're going to see there's a button that says Get Your Paperbacks on Amazon. Click on that. It's going to take you straight to Amazon.com. And you can grab these. Okay. All right. Sounds good. I hope you have a good day.